Yo, it's Guido coming at you with Tactics Talk, guys. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. This episode, we have Toe 2B, and we're going to have two replays of his. He sent me some replays for a little bit of help learning how to do medium tanks. He says he's been doing light tanks quite a bit, trying to move into medium tanks, and he's having a bit of a hard time with it. Well, it's a good thing, actually, that he's done a lot of light tanks because the medium tank is going to live in that land between the light tank and the heavy tank. It can go to the heavy tank places and do some heavy tank things, not as well. And it can do some of the light tank things, not as well. And a lot of people say medium tanks can do everything a light tank can do, but better. That's that's not true. Carrying your camel while moving allows light tanks to get into places medium tanks sometimes can't get into or get closer to enemies that light tanks cannot get close to. It also doesn't have enough armor to be a heavy tank, so it is, like I said, straddling the line between those two classes. The big thing that it has the big thing that the medium tank has is that it can bring the fire support much like a heavy tank can, slightly worse, but it can also move around the field better than a heavy tank. All right, so using a medium tank's mobility, using its firepower and its mobility, requires you to think a little bit different than you do with a heavy tank and to be a little bit more heavy tankish than you would with a light tank. Meaning you can hold positions with a medium tank where in a light tank you would probably run off and try to get away. So we're going to talk a bit about the mobility. Nice initial positioning. I will tell you here, Toe, is I like to be... So I get my Where the IS-2 is, that's where I like to go on this map. This is an okay position, but it really, it really relies on people like this KV-4 to continue to come around that corner. And if I go too far forward, I might get shot from off to the right here. Let's see how Toe works this. He does know there's a few bushes here that can keep him unlit on occasion if he's careful. So we need to talk a little bit here about your mobility and how to use it. And then we're going to talk about, because the, the medium has some mobility, how it moves from target to target. TS-5 decides just to drive across the middle. Nice job. Put a shot into him. He's going to get around that building before he can do anything. You don't sell out because you know the KV-4 is there. Now let's stop right here and go, okay, what, what do we got going on? We have a 4257 over here. We have these two guys pushing the IS-2, but they are on the other side. The KV-4 hasn't done much. We have, still have a couple guys hanging out over here, the Sturve and the M4. I think I would have immediately moved over and seen if I could get shots in the 4557 over there. I see you looking there, maybe thought about it, and then you come back into here. So I'd have gone over there and tried to clear out because what we want to do, like I said, is it's a relatively mobile medium. I'd like to move to the places I need to. You can see he just took a hit. So it would be nice if I could go over there and finish him off. Let's let's look at the threats, prioritize what threats that I can get to the fastest, get some hit points, and then neutralize that threat and move on. I think that medium pushing back in there was the first one, but we end up surviving. We get a little bit lucky that the KV-2 does not actually get a shot on us. So we drive right back around the corner and we actually eat a shot from the KV-2, but it doesn't pen. Notice that that medium is still futzing around back there. As long as my guys are up, and it's over here, right? As long as my guys are over here messing around with that 45, you know, what the heck is it, 42.57, their guns aren't helping us with the front. So we, we need to clear that problem out. We're starting to lose one to four right here. But we're going to come around here and do a nice job taking out the E2. So that's good. Now, where do we go from here? Okay, good. The... 45 thing is dead or will be soon. Is he not quite dead yet? Nope, he's pushed in. He's actually chasing down our Pantera. And that's really bad because that's one of our tier 8s. The Pantera is back there messing around with a tier 6 medium that's pushed into our backfield. And that takes firepower away from the team. So I really think you should have prioritized that right there. Nice job on the E2. And now what do we do? All right, well, this guy's sort of pushing in. And we, we tempt fate and we get lucky again. But to be quite honest, that was about 5... Maybe, what, six, 800 hit points you probably should have lost between the two shots that came in there. Closer to 800, I'd imagine. But we get away with it, and what are we going to do with it? We're going to see the Tiger C moving in. Is he going to come around the corner? Eh, nope, he's going to die. All right, that's good. So that's neutralized. Now what? TS-5 is right there. The 1375 is messing with him. The IS-2 is pinned down in the little nook. And there's a KV-4 on the other side. So you see this, and then we kind of come around here, and here's what I didn't understand. That, that TS-5 is coming around and starting to take on a 1357, and I'm wondering why you would go to the same facing as the TS-5, right? We come around and we just give him a slightly different angle, 
but not a completely different angle. Nice job sneaking that underneath there. I had a dab two right here. I need to get that firepower. I, I need pens on this TS5. We get him tracked. That was really well done. That's a light tank skill right there. That's a good thing to have. He can't quite get his gun on us, and that's really nice. Now we're tracking and damaging. You can see he's going up underneath the fender right there into the hole. Another shot doesn't quite get him, but he gets shot from behind by the M449. All right, now what? Look at this. We're starting to get more parity at 6 to 6. We have a T69 to deal with. There's a Barask raging around the back and a KB4. Those are the three main ones. There's a T43, Hellcat, and JPZ around. There's artillery. It is time to gang tackle this KB4. The T69, obviously we need to watch him. But what happens is we kind of come around here and we sort of ignore the, the KB4. So we're going to say, all right, can we get a shot on the T69? No, he's not there. Okay, so we can't. No, he's over there. And we'll just back up. And our TD pushes in on the KB4. And then we finally go. So I would have made a direct line for that KB4. There was three of you over here. Avoid getting shot by the T69. Now, here's the thing about mobility on mediums that you need to start working on. And I think you probably would have done this with a scout. I'm not really sure why you didn't do this with the medium. But instead of just coming in here and trying to tuck up on this rubble, and maybe you just realized late that the rubble really wasn't all you wanted it to be, either, either tuck into this better cover over here or just go up and around this guy and force him to start moving his turret around because you're just really letting him have shots right there. So I would have shot him, gone on by him, make him turn his turret, maybe his hole. Potentially got past his gun, and we may have been able to kill him before he got shots. All right. So now what's the next thing to worry about? Either the Barask or the T-69. And for my money, I'd probably go try to clear the T-69 out of town, out of the town as opposed to leaving him alive. So we're going to head off this one. We get hit by him. And we start trying to get out of the way. Thank goodness he must not have had a whole clip. So we'll go over here and we'll turn around. Looks like maybe we're thinking about going back towards him and we see the T-43. Target of opportunity, not a bad idea. The Barask is uh, working over our guys in the backfield, unfortunately. The T-69 is lit. Now this is a good idea. Need a little more lead fire on that. T-43 is making a runner. Try to take him down. There we go. And what's next? What's next is go immediately for the T-69. But I would not have gone this way. The reason I would not have gone this way is this big open field and we don't know where those TDs are and more than likely they're sitting back pretty much out there somewhere. All right, plus there's three artillery we're kind of out in the open and we just absolutely get shredded here. So I think even more so than those guys that may have been back there because they could have been anywhere back on the back red line here was more, more of the arty. If I get spotted here, I'm out in the open. I think I would have tucked up against these buildings and headed back towards the T-69 through the southern part of town covering up against both RD and TDs. I don't like driving around in this open area right here during this kind of part of the battle with this many tanks left and plus unspotted TDs. I try to stick around through the buildings in the southern side if I'm messing with somebody who may be back here, plus the RD cover is the big one as well. And unfortunately, we get spotted and just can't quite get away from these guys, get completely shredded by a JPZ just machine gunning us with these rapid fire shots right there. Three kills. 2,408 damage, 223 assists. It, w it was a good game. It was an awful game. I just thought it was a little bit uh, misprioritizing on the guys you want to go for in there. I would have changed the angle on the TS-5 based on what the 1375 was doing right there. But as it was, you did a really nice job and took no damage out of it. So it's hard to argue too much about that. Just a couple times putting yourself in harm's way kind of out in the open in this case right here and not just strafing by the KV-4. There's plenty of reasons why not to strafe by the KV-4 if he has backup or whatever, but there was nobody else around right there and a little bit hesitant to kind of move from target to target in there. But overall, not a, not a bad game and, and used the mobility of the, of the medium pretty well. I don't like that initial spot that much. It worked out for you. Got you some damage. I, I would have been in in the nook right there. It gives me more options to fire from different directions on that. Probably could have gone up that little ramp and be sniping the living piss out of the KV-4 as he's hanging out in the middle right there, and he's going to have a hard time pinning your turret. So maybe positioning-wise, a few quibbles with that right there, but nicely done overall. And this, just this last mistake, you lost a lot of hit points kind of driving out in, in what looks like to not be an open area because it's kind of covered up by stuff, but it really, based on the way this map plays, is quite an open area. All right, let's look at the second one.
All right, the second game is uh, pretty quick. <laughs> it ends up being a win, but it's a positioning problem for Toe2B. He is here on Westfield, spawned into the northeast, and he spawned down below where the mediums and the light tanks spawn. Why? Because it's mostly mediums and light tanks. He has a prototype up on the top up there. That's basically a heavy tank. He has a bunch of TDs. There's himself a Lorraine, a Pantera, and a Pershing, as well as a Progetto. It's just all mediums and TDs. And initially, I saw him headed this when I went outstanding toe, is looked at this setup and said, all right, I'm pretty much the heavy tank here. I have a good turret, great depression. I need to try to get up there into the northwest and help win the top. Excuse me, help win the top. That's not exactly what happens. I think he sees that there's only one proto up there and decides that he doesn't want to go up alone. Okay. Yeah, he just wrote weird down on the bottom left in the chat because it is weird. It's a weird setup. So what do you do? Do you hang out here on the backside? Do you push up and try to help the prototype? Looking at the enemy setup, I think I'd probably go help the prototype, especially right now. If I look down there and I say, interesting, look how many mediums of their mediums they've pushed. The Progetto is actually on the bottom edge of the town. The 4202, the other Progetto, the Senlac, and a couple of their mediums are all over in the south. I think had he pushed up with the prototype and acted more like the heavy tank. Remember we talked about medium tanks can be heavy tanks in certain situations. He'd have been a lot better off. There were also a couple M4043s. Another option was to sit on the back side right about where he was with the TDs. Hopefully get some shots as the prototype comes in. But he's decided, it looks like, to cross over and see if he can help his guys, who are kind of getting beat up, his his scouts headed towards the southeast. So we're going to come over here, and then we're going to keep pushing. And I know this position gets used a lot by some of the, the bigger streamers and the very good players. It does provide shots both ways, but I don't like it because it is so reliant on the on the friendly team to get you lights. So you're, you're not going to do any kind of lighting yourself here unless somebody else comes right up to you, like say the Progetto or somebody else red. So you're relying on your own your team to give you lights and it doesn't have a lot of flexibility. Yes, you can go both directions, but it takes a while to get to those positions. So let's see what he does here. And it's not a great situation for his team. They're not they're not positioned very well. And he just kind of keeps pushing in and I'm thinking, okay, well, ooh. And that's the problem right there, right? We just got hit from the side from the Progetto. We get hit twice. The Senlac, the Su-130, then we get hit again. Getting hit from, oh boy. And now we're, uh, we've got 1,100 spotting. And we're going to back out. And unfortunately, when we back out like this, everyone who's over there has shots on our side. And we're trying to not get killed. Oh, there's another Su right there. We'll get a shot on him. There's our first damage, 227 trying to survive and boom the M4043 nukes us from the red line down there. So yeah that was a really fast game. I, I liked the initial thought of going up top. I would have pushed up and helped the prototype. If that didn't work I would have stayed. If I didn't if I looked at that and went well I don't think I can get up there then I would have stayed with these guys and then when you moved across it was not a bad move but I would have stayed back a little further north and come across here and get lit up. It was just way too early with that many guns in the game right there. And your team's doing okay. This ends up being a win for them, actually. They've knocked out some, some pretty good numbers. Another longer, long game kind of possibility was get up to the top, look at that, and go, all right, not enough going up to help him. Go back down the bottom and come back up and help these mediums over here. It looks like you're covered on this part of town, right? Down here on the southeast part of town, you're probably covered. So either help these TDs, help these guys over here, or still for my money, I would have pushed right up and helped this prototype to try to hold down that north part right there. That's what I've got, man. Hopefully that helps you out. I don't see anything you're doing necessarily with with the mediums here. I looked at a couple of the other games that you sent me. You sent me five or six. And they all, they all seemed reasonable for what you're doing. It's just some, some specific positioning problems. That position you went to, had it been back that way with those guys, wasn't a bad idea. It's just you went too far. On the video before, the general area, area you were at wasn't a bad idea, but there were a couple better positions, notably around the corner in the nook right there, especially with a little help like you had, and then just the reaction to it. This one, it's a little inexplicable why you kept pushing in right there. Maybe it was a case of, well, I'm not seeing anyone, not seeing anyone, but this position right here, I don't think you would have taken a light tank there, 
so that that's maybe a way to think about it because you're a light tank player don't take your your medium tank to positions you wouldn't even take your light tank to early does that make sense I don't think anyone would want to take a, maybe you have taken a light tank there and done well but there's no cover so somebody's sitting on the back edge like the two su 130s you got them dead that was nice 1500 assists so I mean it's not a complete wash of a game could have been a lot better obviously had you lasted a little bit longer but try not to to force the issue but one of the things might be that you're thinking well I've got a more robust better tank maybe I can be a little more aggressive just dial that back slightly in certain cases and I, I think you'll be doing fine all right man Appreciate you sending those in. I hope that helped. That's all I've got, and we will see you.